In this getting started guide, we're going to recreate the type of simple vegetation setup that you see in the demo scene included in Vegetation Studio. We'll be using the assets included in the extended demo scene available on the website awesometech.no, as well as the free speed trees that are included in the Unity standard assets. To get started, we'll add the terrain from the demo scene. This terrain was made in Gaia, but the splat map has been generated by Vegetation Studio. Vegetation Studio has a great splat map generating tool that we'll come back to in a later video. You can, of course, use whatever terrain shader and splat map tools you wish. The terrain textures being used here are the default textures included in Vegetation Studio. Once you have your terrain ready, it's time to start using Vegetation Studio. Select Add Vegetation Studio to Scene from the menu. The vegetation system is off by default in the editor. It activates automatically when you enter play mode, but in editor you get to press the big green button to start it. Vegetation Studio has many options, but nothing much is going to happen before it has a vegetation package configured. Vegetation packages store all the information about the vegetation items and their spawning rules for a given vegetation setup. For update purposes, it's good to locate these files outside the Awesome Technologies folder, so we'll go ahead and make a new one called Awesome Config and make our first package. Select Create and then Create Vegetation Package from the Awesome Technologies menu. You can let any other system handle splat map generation and select no textures, or select the number of textures your terrain will be using, and you can change the number of textures later. In this case, we'll use 8 textures because that's what this terrain already uses. Vegetation Studio does not overwrite a terrain's existing splat map unless you want it to. You can have several vegetation packages assigned to a terrain and quickly switch between them, for instance to simulate changing seasons. In this case, we'll stick to a single summer package. We'll add two grasses and two trees to our setup, and we'll use a simple purlin noise to make sure they don't overlap or collide. To add vegetation items to Vegetation Studio, you simply drag them onto their respective drop zones. Vegetation Studio includes a very nice grass patch generator that lets you customize your own grass geometry to use with the system, but it also has a shortcut that lets you add grass textures directly to the terrain. If you do this, the grass gets added with a default grass patch that's pretty flexible and a reasonable choice for many grasses, although for some grass types, like tall reeds, you would definitely want to roll your own custom grass patches. In this case, we'll adjust the size range the grasses are spawned with to get a more shaggy, less uniform look. This second grass gets the exact same grass patch geometry as the last, but we'll play a bit with some of the parameters to make it look a little different. The steepness adjustment controls at what angles of the terrain the grass is allowed to grow. In this case, from flat terrain, to around 40 degrees slopes, pretty steep, and we'll let it grow from sea level to pretty high up in the mountains of this map. Well, far beyond actually. We will also set the purlin noise to inverted to make sure the new grasses spawn on different parts of the terrain than the first one. The procedure for adding trees like speed trees is the same as for grasses. The parameters change somewhat for each type of vegetation, but the basics are similar. Here we'll adjust the average distance between each spawned tree to ensure a reasonable coverage. We've turned off Perlin noise distribution for the second tree, and are instead using the collision detection system to make sure the trees don't collide with each other. To round things off, we'll add a simple plane at the water height and a simple water-like shader to it. A key concept in Vegetation Studio is the water level. Every other parameter is relative to this value, so setting it at the correct height for this terrain solves our underwater grass problem. We'll also add the wind zone for the look of things. This hooks into Vegetation Studio automatically.
We include a nice little script for camera control that emulates the kind of navigation you have in the editor. And there you go, a very simple vegetation studio forest.